6 o'clock on a Wednesday. You know what time it is. It is time to ignore the advice, ignore the, the, the pushback, ignore the warnings of all the people who say, hey, just post whatever you want on the internet, you know, but, but don't, don't engage. Don't, don't dare go into the comments section. That's the worst of the worst. Your Twitter replies are one thing. Your uh, replies on threads are actually quite lovely because the mean people haven't found threads yet. Uh, but on, on Twitter, you know, it is what it is. You know what you're getting into, but God forbid, do not, do not go into the comments. And yet, Anthony Haney, each and every week, what do we do? We read those comments, baby. That was a good one. That was a good one. Excellent job out of you. Bravo. Bravo. You feel good about it? I do. Okay, good. All right. Uh, you can leave your comments in one of three places. There are three channels we check for this segment. Uh, we'll hit uh, two of the three today. Uh, you can leave your comments at youtube.com slash at the team 980, where we post on-demand content and stream live daily from four to seven. Uh, we also, have, of course, have uh, a lot of on-demand comment our content both from this show and from take command on my page at Craig Hoffman on YouTube. And then uh, today we're actually going to dive into some of the take command comments where we post the full episodes of take command at one Oh six, seven, the fan. We start on my page though, uh, with some comments on take command and our conversation with Ross Tucker, who we had on earlier this week and Tucker questioned Ron Rivera's choice like it was kind of a weird question, I will admit, because he was part saying, "Why the hell are you going with Sam Howell this year?" But also because Ross actually kind of understands it and believes in Sam Howell and liked what he saw, I said, "Hey man, why didn't you go with him for part of last year?" Um, and some folks agree. Uh, LaCarlo Moore seven one two one says, "Ron dropped the ball last year after the New York Giants tie. Should have started uh, Sam Howell the second game." Uh, the second Giants game instead of the Dallas game with given uh, to give more sample size. I just don't know who honestly they are. I know they that they can maybe win eight games or maybe seven, uh, but I have to wait to watch them in the preseason. I think they should still go after a left tackle, wide receiver, and linebacker before the final roster. I don't know what you want at wide receiver. They've got one of the best groups in the league. Um, linebacker, they've got a guy they dropped in the first round. Left tackle, you know, Leno's fine. Um, I don't, at this point, like, when people say stuff like this, Anthony, um, on that part, I'll address the Rivera thing in a second. But like, who do they think is available right now? I don't know. I'm available. Cool. You you ready to play left tackle better than Charles Leno? Oh no, nah, not that. What about linebacker better than Jamin Davis? Not that either. Uh, are you ready to play? Even if you want to go depth, uh, are you ready to play receiver better than Deami Brown? I don't think I am. Marcus Kemp. Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. I'm just... Figured I would check. Are you ready to play? Hell no. I'm just curious. I did get my press credential today for training camp. <laughs> oh, I do got to do that. I think CK will do it for you. Just make sure you tell him. Okay. Bet. And if not, if it's if he's already done it and you missed the boat, then yeah, you should do that. Yeah. Uh, As far as the, the Howell thing, like, again... Do y'all not remember that they were in the contention for the playoffs? Like, you're not going to throw a... I don't... Like, I guess I don't say I don't care how much you like him because there's a lot of people that like him because they think he's going to be the next coming of Russell Wilson or, you know, in Tom Brady. Insert your late-round pick who's become awesome here. But, like, unless you know he's that guy and you don't, um, you're not throwing him into the middle of the season. I, I do think there's something to be said about if he's shown some things at practice and you thought he was legitimately your best option, fine. He did play probably better in that Dallas game than any other quarterback play in the previous couple of weeks. Taylor wasn't particularly good in the Giants games, and that ultimately is why after their playoff chances were hanging by a thread, they go back to Carson, which was a disaster of decision, and who could have seen that coming? Um, but there just wasn't a great window unless you thought Sam was like, legitimately your best option and perhaps that's a legitimate argument to make in the cleveland game you just say hey we're gonna see what happens with sam and if he guides us to the playoffs he guides us to the playoffs i think probably the best move would have been to go back to taylor and trust that he'd figure it out but they ultimately went to carson and you know we saw what we saw and you know i don't know how much of a different like a bigger sample size doesn't mean you're gonna make a different decision going into this year either um i guess unless sam was terrible so there is that um 
we also talked about kind of the strategy of of how they move forward with Hal and what we saw from them last season. And uh, Ross Tucker referenced the Eagles game. They beat the Eagles because they ran the ball. Joe Gibbs formula. Ron is all chips in on Sam, and I agree. I think the the run pass ratio this year is going to be one of the more interesting statistics to watch because I do think they came out of last year not to. I'm not going to do the Martin Mayhew twist the quote bit where they want to have two to one, but they definitely came out of the, the year thinking we need to run the ball way more. And I think Bienemy came in and was like, "No, you don't. You need an effective running game." And obviously, Bienemy is going to. Uh, he's a running back uh, and a running backs coach before he, got, he became an OC. It's a guy who's going to believe in the run game and what it can do. But I think it's just a much smarter use of play action. I think it's screens and things like that as an extension of the running game. I think there's going to be a lot more variety in the running game this year. But they will still run it. And how much are they, you know, are you maybe a 60-40 team if you say drop back versus versus runs plus screens plus shovel passes plus all that, you know, plus quick game? Yeah, I think that's feasible. And I think that's just a way you can win and be successful. And it gives your ch- your, yourself a chance at more explosive plays than traditional runs because a screen can be a big play if it's executed well, a lot easier than a, a handoff can. Um, especially if you have you know good misdirection and you get a few defenders out of the way that way and then you hit the timing right and, and off you go. Um, but I also think there's things you can do that are not quick game and not screens and things like that that are still not drop back pass and that's where you get into your play action games your boots your keepers your half rolls all things like that that i think are going to be a lot bigger part of this offense than last year and that will be ultimately good for how so do they need to insulate the quarterbacks better than they did last year yes will that help insulate the offensive line that is better than last year hell yeah but does that mean running the football like maybe they thought they were going to need to coming out of last year i don't i don't think so um, we spent a lot of time earlier in the week, uh, including yesterday, on the running back situation in the NFL and why running backs are just frankly kind of screwed uh, on on their contract situation. Paper Tags commented and said, allow running backs to become free agents after two years. I think that is a big unintended consequences bad type of situation. Because what happens if a guy gets hurt? What happens if he stinks? And he had a four-year deal coming out as a rookie that was of guaranteed money. And early round picks get that. Versus now you're a free agent after two years. You're not getting that money at all. So what I, what I don't think running backs specifically are going to look for is a mechanism to 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 take away guaranteed money. The question is, how do they get more of it? Considering they can't become free agents till four, five, six, seven years into their career, if you're a first-round pick, whose fifth-year option gets picked up, and then you get franchise tagged twice, that's seven years. So you'd be entering year eight of your career with seven years of NFL service under your belt by the time you become a true free agent for the first time you're probably not going to get a big money single year deal, but you're definitely not getting a three or four year contract in the same way that a wide receiver, a quarterback, even an offensive lineman or defensive lineman would. And that's the problem. Is there a way to trigger something earlier in the contract to guarantee money based off performance? That would be my solution. Um, and and I do think a solution that I came up with yesterday when J.I. Halsell was on the show that was, um, that I think actually would work is if a guy, and, and I would want this for all positions, by the way, if a guy makes all pro, or let's say he makes three Pro Bowls in his first five years or four years, he can't be franchise tagged. I just, I think limiting the market of the top players is bad business. And and I said this multiple times over the last couple of days, but I'll say it again here. Big double underline emphasis. If the business model is to rely on cheap labor and it's working, you've got to find a way as the labor to readjust the market. So what I mean by that is if the whole point is as owners, we can find cheap labor that isn't that doesn't hurt our chances at winning. How can we remake the structure of contracts and remake the market if we're labor? So the union in a way that if you want to chase cheap labor, 
you're going to lose football games. And I don't know if there's a perfect formula for that because the NFL is very unpredictable. There's a lot of hidden gems. There's a lot of guys that are just the right fit in the right system, and they sign a deal as cheap labor, and it turns out they're really good, and then a couple years later, they're too expensive, and they wind up getting replaced by someone else. They go sign a deal somewhere else. Like, think of William Jackson III. Uh, cheap labor in, Balt- or in uh, Cincinnati because they they draft him. He hits free agency. He goes to Washington on a significant deal. Sure, he made a lot of money and no one's going to feel bad for him, but he doesn't work out in Washington. Now he's damaged goods and he goes and signs for less money somewhere else. What if he just stays in Cincinnati? Like, what if he goes somewhere? Like, the fit and how the career plays out and the results have to matter, but that's kind of my point is if the results are good, how do we encourage team? And th- this is the other aspect of it. I was thinking about this the other day. Is there a way if you re sign a player? that it counts like his money is only 90% on a cap hit. Because there's two different things we're talking about here. There's cash and cap. The players care only about cash. How much money is going into my bank account? The teams, I'm not going to say they only care about cap, but when they're roster building, they only care about cap. The owner cares about cash. Hey, I don't want to give that guy all my money. I Find a way to be a good negotiator and get his number down. But as a GM who's looking at like percents on a spreadsheet of of the salary cap so I can build a roster and I can give certain percent to quarterback, certain percent to wide receiver, et cetera, if there's a way that keep I'm incentivized to keep my own players, which is good for the league from a marketing standpoint because you get players staying in one market over time and it doesn't count quite as much on my cap slash I feel comfortable as long as my owner is cool with it paying a little bit more than others might in cash, knowing it's going to count the same as my cap. I can offer this math. I don't think actually works exactly like this, but basically 110%. You're trying to get to the 90% number, but you get the point. You can offer over what others would and have it count the same on the cap. That seems like something that should be considered. But again, the GMs aren't at the negotiating table when it comes to collective bargaining. Owners and players are. Owners... And players care about the cash and not the cap. And thus, a creative solution like that is absolutely not going to be be in the the cards. Um, Lots of comments on our videos about the Harris deal kind of being cleared earlier in the week when Nikki and Mark posted their story in the Washington Post. I made an analogy about clearing the woods. Uh, reader Casey says you should have done it like Zord and trying to compare it to whitewater rafting. Was there Anthony? I know you weren't, uh, you were still a, a child when Jim Zorn was coaching. How old were you in like 2009? 2009, I was 13 years of age. Were you uh, locked into Jim Zorn press conferences? Uh, I watched, I watched. Was there a, I, I want to know what the Jim Zorn whitewater rafting reference is to. Jim Zorn whitewater rafting what famous oh here we go uh jim zorn knew his status as the head coach of washington was tenuous back when his team was one and one and coming off a victory no less uh ever since then as the losses have mounted this is from the reporter uh he's grown accustomed to the whispers and the stares and the general sense from all sorts of people that his job was in jeopardy Apparently, he compared it to whitewater rafting of some kind, but not in this article. Why did that? Why was that the first thing that came up? Someone in the comments to this this video, when this posts online on demand, or if someone has access to it right now watching the live stream, drop the Jim Zorn whitewater rafting reference because I want to know about it. I need to know about it with every fiber of my soul. Um, There's a lot of people, Anthony, that say, you know, hey, time to turn the page. Uh, You know, I just can't wait for football. The commander should officially be under new ownership by Friday. Rookies will be in training camp also on Friday. The veterans arriving four days later. Everything else is drama for the tabloids in the Washington Post. I get it. And look, most of the time, we're going to talk football on this show. But, like, I do think that there's a little bit of underestimation, I'll call it, by the fan base, that other teams don't deal with personnel drama. Now, is it mostly head coaches and you know GMs and stuff like that versus the owner? Yeah. 
have there been a has been a, a special kind of hell here the last five, 10, 15, 20, 24 specifically years? Absolutely. Is there a lot more airtime that gets spent on this radio station and others uh, and, you know, ink spent in print because they still print the newspaper, uh, digital ink spent on their websites, written about things that are in regards to ownership here versus other places? Absolutely. But sports, Lebedard, Dan Lebedard says this all the time. Sports is a giant male soap opera. Like, we generally as dudes, um, which is still the majority of the fans, but also also ladies who care about sports, everyone who cares about sports says they just, or a lot of people say, oh, I just want the games. You don't. You care more about the transactions than the games. You care about free agency. You care about trades. You don't call and be like, oh, that, I mean, sometimes, yes, in the middle of the season, yeah, that third down, whatever. Um, or that, you know, West Sunsell Jr.'s defensive schemes. Um, but you know what moves the needle a lot more? Trades, free agency. Hey, uh, is this is he the right guy for quarterback? That's not that's not the game. That's not just a football. That stuff is football adjacent. But it's the drama. It's the storylines. It's the human beings. And I am excited to be in a an ecosystem where we're talking about the same stuff that everyone else talks about that. So I'm not trying to poo-poo the sentiment of that comment. But let's not pretend like we're we're now entering this pure mode where all we're going to talk about is receiver depth on the dagger on third down and whether Biennemi made the right play call and if it was executed right by each and every guy and how the offensive line passed off the stunt. That's not That's not how any of this works. I care about that stuff. I'm a big old nerd about that stuff. But if that was all it was, it actually wouldn't be that fun. Uh, let's see. Do we got time for one more, potentially? Oh, yeah. We got we got time for one more. Our guy, Merle. Merle. Spelled M-E-R-L. Merle. Merle Garrett. Uh, when when uh, the legalese and the legal snafus hit earlier in the week before the story that cleared them, uh, I'm starting to believe that the owners don't want Josh Harris as an owner. Plus, Dan has dirt on everyone. I believe Tanya Snyder doesn't want to sell the team. And I was like, I responded to Merle, who comments just the most backwards things all the time with, your consistency of bad takes is incredible. He said, we will see on July 20th. Well, Merle, that is correct. We will technically see tomorrow on July 20th when this vote happens. And I'm willing to bet every dollar in my bank account that I am right. Merle. 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 Really? Nothing, Anthony? You're just going to let me keep doing that? I mean, I heard you. Merle. Merle. <laughs> Is it's it M U R L? M E R L. I gotta, I gotta pull Merle ba back up. I gotta pull his comment back up. I just X out of the page. You got, you got to see Merle's picture for it to make sense. Oh man! So you gotta, you gotta go to YouTube and go to the videos and and find Merle, and uh, I think people will get it. He I just, think you really like his name. He just looks. He, he's, he's got a big Eeyore vibe. You're just sad and everything. The sky is falling all the time, and I'm just like, nah, man. Like you're really bad at reading, reading tea leaves, which is. Fine, but get your negativity up out of here, Merle. That's never read the comments. You can leave a comment at 1067 The Fan on any episode of Take Command. Any of the clips on demand from Take Command or this here radio show at Craig Hoffman, or you can leave live on the Team 980 at the Team 980 on YouTube or on any of our on demand content. <laughs> Hey, this is DA, and you're listening to The Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.